हॅलो माय डिअर स्टुडंट्स माय सेल्फ प्रोफेसर हर्षद दाईंगडे आय एम डिलिंग विथ अ कोर्स नेम्ड ॲज कंट्रोल सिस्टीम सो टुडे वी हॅव टू स्टार्ट दिस सब्जेक्ट दॅट इज अ कंट्रोल सिस्टीम सो लेट सी कोर्स ओव्हर यू दिस कोर्स इज डिलिंग विथ थर्ड इयर स्टुडंट्स अँड द कोर्स कोड इज ई टी एल थ्री झिरो टू द नेम इज कंट्रोल सिस्टीम द टीचिंग स्कीम इज लाईक दिस वन दिस कोर्स विल बी हॅविंग थ्री आवर्स पर वीक अँड दॅट्स वाय द टोटल क्रेडिट्स विल बिकम अ थ्री देर विल नॉट बी एनी लॅब टू दिस सब्जेक्ट इफ यू सी द इवॅल्युएशन स्कीम एस ई वन अँड एस ई टू विल बी हॅविंग ट्वेंटी फाईव्ह मार्क्स इच अँड एस ई ई विल बी हॅविंग टोटल फिफ्टी मार्क्स सो दिस सब्जेक्ट कॅरीज टोटल हंड्रेड मार्क्स I think you uh, all have gone through the structure of third year syllabus. Okay. So let's see course outcomes. My dear students, I think you know what is a course. What do you mean by course outcome? So course outcome is nothing but what student will be able to do after completion of this course. So there are four course four core course outcomes of this subject. The first one is at the end of this course student will be able to apply knowledge of mathematics science and engineering to design analyze and control the different systems second is student will be able to explain time and frequency domain analysis for different control systems third course outcome is student will be able to demonstrate and compare different types of a control systems and the last one is you will be able to describe state space modeling and its variables okay so these are the course outcomes of this subject let's see syllabus of this subject if you see this course it is having total 8 units in first unit we have to see just basics of a control systems second chapter is dealing with modeling and representation of a control system third chapter is performance and stability of different types of control systems the next one that is chapter number 4 is dealing with frequency domain techniques chapter number 5 covers compensatory designs and the last chapter is dealing with state space concepts that is chapter number 6 so this course is having total 6 units and if you see the gate exam this is very very important subject as per as the gate exam is concerned okay so this is a very important subject for you let's see the reference books that we have to use for this control system subject the first one is control system engineering by the ij Nag- nagarat and m gopal so the publisher is new age international publishers limited new delhi the second book is control system engineering by norman nisse this is wiley publication book okay so there are n number of books available in our library you can refer others no problem but these are the two major books that we have to refer for this subject so let's start with unit number 1 that is basic concepts of control system so what is basically system so system is nothing but an arrangement or a combination of a different physical components connected in a sequence to perform any work or function suppose you want to perform any work or function you require one system and that system is nothing but a, it is combination of different physical components as it is combination of different physical com- components and we want that system should perform any work or function obviously we have to apply something as a input and due to this input and this physical combination the uh, physical components interaction we may get output so basically system is nothing but a physical combination of uh, components connected in a sequence or in particular manner and that physical components uh, to that physical components we are applying the input and we are getting the output so in this system or in any system these three components are these three parts are common one is input second is physical combination of components and third is a output 
so what is the basically input so input is nothing but an exta uh, an excitation applied to the system from an external source in order to produce the output is called as input we have seen that a system is physical interconnection of a components so we should apply the external signal to that that is called as input to generate the output so what is output when we apply any input to the system it will interact with physical components and it will generate some result and that can be called as a output so the actual response obtained from a system when the input is applied that is called as what output so this is simple definition of a system my dear students we have to go, uh, we have to see each and every basic basics of this subject then only you can understand the next levels of this subject okay so that's why uh, keep concentration be prepared always with basics of any subject the next one is what is control okay so the control is nothing but the process of monitoring activities to ensure that they are being accomplished as a planned means what we have designed one system but we have to ensure that that system is giving us a proper output okay so that's why we need some control to that system so that is nothing but our the word the meaning of this word control so what do you mean by control the control is nothing but to regulate to direct or to command a system so that the desired objective is attained okay so we have seen the definition of a system we have seen our definition of a control so what is next yes the next is a control system when you combine this definition of a system and a control you will get the definition of a control system okay so system which is having some control can be called as what control system so let's see the defin definition of this control system a control system is a combination of different physical components that act together in a such manner to regulate direct or command itself to achieve a certain objective or work is nothing but what control system so it is a system which is having interconnection of a physical components but that physical uh, components are interacting with each other in a such a way that we are having control on that and we can regulate that uh, we can regulate direct and command that system so that we can get a certain objective or work so this is the definition of a control system so system which is having con having control can be called as what control system okay so this is a definition of our subject control system i think uh, you uh, all have got this so don't confuse uh, in between system and control system okay Th so there is a difference in between system and control system so suppose if you are having a system you can app you may apply the input and you may get the output okay and suppose you are you are having one control system here also you can apply the input and you can get the output but in a system you may get proper output but you may or may not get desired output okay but in control system you will get desired output so what is the difference between the proper output and desired output that we have to see okay so let's see the another example of a fan to understand between this system and a control system keep in mind that system may produce or may not produce desired output it may produce proper it produces proper output but control system only can give you a desired output okay so let's see a uh, fan's example so if you see the fan it can be a system okay so what is the basically system so system is nothing but a physical uh, interconnection of a components like a motor blades different types of nuts wires okay so uh, we are not going to, uh, uh, so much inside in, in this physical structure of this fan just you know the different parts of this fans so it is having uh, blades motors okay and different physical components and here you are going to apply the input in the form of electrical signal that is 230 volt ac signal and you are getting output here as a air flow means what this is your this is your system to that system you are applying the electrical energy or electrical input and this electrical input is converted into air flow okay so this is called as proper output okay but this is only proper output 
it 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 cannot be called as desired desired output okay why so if you see the fan with blades but without regulator can be system because it can provide a proper output that is air flow but it cannot be a control system because it cannot provide desired output aapko jitna air flow chahiye utna wo provide nahi kar sakta uske liye aapko another control element chahiye so it cannot be called as a control system okay i think you got this so when we call this fan as a control system when we add one most important device that is control element then this fan can, can be called as a control system why let's see again it is a system that is physical interconnection of some components again it is having input again it will be having a output but here we are using one extra device that is called as controller or we can say control element which can actually adjust the speed of a fan and in terms it can adjust the flow of air means what the flow of air depends upon the gear that you are placing here or the button or the switch position it it depends upon the switch position means here this 230 volt ac signal is not directly applied to the fan this 230 volt ac signal is converted into different electrical energy types with the help of this gears you know the gears or the switches positions of this control element we generally we are calling this as a regulator regulator it is having the switch position like 1 2 3 4 and as per that this control element is is providing electrical energy to this fan and this fan's output is now or the fan is giving the output in the terms of controlled air flow means here it is providing your desired output means you can set the speed of this fan and if you set the speed of this fan you are generally setting the flow or we are controlling the air flow okay so fan with the blades and with the regulator can be called as control si system because it it is providing your desired output that is a controlled air air flow okay so i think you got this concept that is difference between the system and control system okay so these uh, control systems are generally classified into two types based upon the control action the first one is called as open loop control system and second is called as a closed loop control system okay so what do you mean by open loop control system a system in which the control action is totally totally independent of the output then that system is called as a open loop system okay means what here we are not going to measure any output and we are not taking any feedback in terms okay so generally if you see this block diagram of this control system it is having a process it is having controller okay to the controller you are giving the reference input and we are getting the control output so this process or plant may be any actual physical uh, combination of a system which are which is actually interacting to each other to get the result but that is again controlled by the controller if you see the fan fans example the actual fans assembly is nothing but a process and the regulator is nothing but your controller okay so if you remove this controller it it just becomes a system so that's why this controller is applied here uh, in fan it is fans regulator so that's why it is called in calling as it is called as a control system so this two controller we are applying a reference input that is called as rt and the output of controller is ut and that is applied to the process or actual physical system and the output is that the output that we are getting is a controlled output that is called as a ct okay so basically the system without feedback we can say can be called as a open loop system okay so which are the examples of open loop system the bread toaster you can see electric lift simple traffic signals and the coffee server we can say these are the examples of open loop system so we will see the difference between open loop and closed loop system don't worry so what are the advantages of uh, open loop control system okay so if you see this open loop control system these are very simple in construction so that's why we can design these systems easily as uh, they are simple in construction and design they are more economical and as they are simple again they are easy to maintain the maintenance cost is very low we can say 
and these systems are not uh, measuring any output and giving feedback that's why they are generally stable systems and due to this also again they are very sensitive to the inputs okay input signals what are the disadvantages the most important disadvantage of the system is they are inaccurate because there is no any assembly to measure the output of the system okay so that's why as they are inaccurate they are unreliable also okay the most uh, again the most important disadvantage of this open loop control system is that uh, the external noise or disturbance can affect the output so that's why they may not give uh, us a proper output we can say or desired output and the last one is any change in the output cannot be corrected automatically as they are open loop not closed loop or, or as we are not measuring the output or we are not getting the feedback so that's why the any change in the output cannot be corrected automatically so it will continuously give the output so there is no any measurement assembly at the output okay so that's why these are the four disadvantages of open loop control systems so that's why they are not generally used so accuracy is main requirement of any uh, design engineer so that's why we are generally using closed loop systems so now i think you got the idea of this one that is what is closed loop system in open loop system if you add the feedback then it will convert it into closed loop system okay so why this feedback is generally required because we have to see the measure and we have to see the output that is we are actually that we are getting this outputs or not that's we have to that we have to see so that's why a system in which the control action is somehow dependent on the output is called as a control system means what here we have to measure the output then we have to take the feedback of this output and we have to apply the feedback to this input and then we can correct our output okay so that's why the closed loop system is having a feedback okay so if you see this system this is called as a forward path this is the uh, referent uh, reference transducer we can say so what do you mean by transducer basically transducer is a device which converts physical quantity into electrical signal okay so your input may be uh, may be physical uh, so it should be converted into electrical signal because again the, the most of the systems are the most systems require the electrical signal for its operation okay so this is the reference transducer we can say which is converting this command input into electrical signal we can say that signal is a reference signal that is called as a rt okay then this rt is applied to the controller we will see here what is error afterwards then that controller will produce another electrical signal which is called as manipulated signal that is mt and that is applied to the actual plant okay now suppose we have not taken any feedback initially we have applied the input with the help of command input or reference transducer that is rt that rt is supposed directly applied to the controller and the controller is generating mt and this as per this mt suppose this plant is working so if you say, uh, see the example of a fan suppose this fan is rotating here. what we have to do here we have to see the actual speed of the fan means we have to measure the speed of that that fan means what we have to measure this quantity electrical quantity again okay or physical quantity afterwards we can convert that into electrical quantity and that should be applied in to the input and it should be compared at some uh, somewhere so that we can regulate that output so are you getting that so means what suppose this output is not as per the desired specification we have to measure this output and we have to apply this output we have to take the feedback of this output and apply it to this input and we have to compare with the reference input or re desired uh, input we can say and as per that we have to take the action so that's why this is called as a feedback system so how this feedback is taken see here suppose the fan is rotating but that is not accurate we can say then it is measured with the help of some feedback element or we can say feedback transducer again what is a transducer a transducer is a device which which is converting any physical quantity into electrical signal so this physical quantity cannot be directly applied here we have to convert that physical quantity into electrical signal so that's why here we have to use speed transducer we can say to this example okay so this feedback transducer is nothing but your speed transducer which is converting actual speed into proportional electrical signal okay so this feedback is used here that output is called as a ct the ct is given to the feedback transducer or feedback element in general and that is producing the output as a bt and that feedback is given to the 
this system so what is this system that we will see afterwards okay so this element is now comparing this reference input with the feedback signal okay so this rt is a reference input and this bt is a feedback signal and it is compared and the error is produced so that its fan speed can be increased or decreased as per your specification if it is greater than your uh, specification then this error signal will regulate this control in a such a way that the speed is decreased if the speed is less than your desired specification this error signal in generate this error signal will uh, actuate this controller or give the direction to this control in a such a way that the speed of the fan is increased okay so this error signal is nothing but it is a difference in between reference signal and bt it can be positive and it, it can be negative it totally depends upon the actual output quantity and this controller is again apply the manipulated signal or change the signal we can say to the plant and the uh, process is uh, then regulated so this process is regulated until this error becomes zero okay means what this and this signals are equal we can say then only we can say the uh, system is giving you a proper output and we are getting uh, the pro desired output we can say or proper output okay so this is called as a forward path from input to output this is called as a forward path and if you see this feedback path it is exactly reverse to the forward path it is from output to the input so i think you got the idea about open loop system and closed loop system so as such arrangement is done here we are getting accurate output and this is the most important requirement of any design design engineer so that's why the closed loop systems are mostly useful or applicable in engineering okay so let's see the examples of uh, closed loop system uh, the first example we can say the there are number of examples so we have to see few few that is automatic electric iron water level controller and human perspiration system okay so if you see the advantage of a closed loop control system the closed loop control systems are more accurate even in the presence of a non linearity so what do you mean by non linearity that we will see afterwards but we can say that these are more accurate accurate because they are comparing the output actual output continuously and they are correcting itself or themselves to get desired output okay highly accurate as any error arising is corrected due to the presence of feedback okay that we have discussed earlier bandwidth is a large what do you mean by bandwidth the range of a frequency over which the system works that is large again this is a uh, important advantage of the system facilitates automation means they are correcting themselves to get a desired output so we can say this system becomes automatic automatic system so that's why they helps us for automation purpose the sensitivity of the system may be made small to make a system more stable ha sensitivity is made small because we have to make the system more stable okay and this system is less affected by noise or external uh, disturbance this advantage we have to see again the system is costlier because the system is complicated to design so that's why it is costlier as the system is complex it requires more maintenance maintenance cost is high sometimes feedback leads to the oscillatory response so what is what do you mean by oscillatory response that we will see afterwards while actually studying that response so overall gain is reduced due to the presence of feedback as we are uh, taking a feedback the gain is what reduced okay so kuch paane ke liye kuch khona padta hai you know so that's why the gain is less the, uh, as compared to open loop system in a feedback system okay or control closed loop system stability is a major problem and more care is to be needed more care is needed to design stable closed loop system okay so this is again the biggest disadvantage i can say the stability problem is there and we have to take more care while designing any stable closed loop system okay so it is a little bit more complicated task to design a stable closed loop system okay so these are the disadvantages of closed loop system so what are generally difference between differences between open loop closed system and closed loop closed closed loop control system open loop control system and closed loop control system the first one is the open loop 
systems are simple and economical as we have seen earlier on the other hand the glow glue systems are complex and costlier so as the systems are simpler they consumes less power because less number of components that we are using on the other hand closed loop control systems consumes more power the open loop systems are easier to construct because of less number of components required this we have discussed earlier but closed loop systems are not so easy or we can say little bit complicated to design because the components are more so open loop systems are inaccurate and unreliable that we have seen earlier earlier the closed loop systems are accurate and more reliable we can say stability is not major problem in open loop control systems generally the open loop systems are stable we can say see uh, don't confuse in between stable and accurate okay stable is different term and accurate is different term the system may be stable but it may inaccurate okay so don't confuse in between that so stability is generally there in a uh, open loop system and if you see the closed loop control system the stability is major problem because the design is complex okay so that's why the stability is stability problem is there in a closed loop system the range of frequency over which the system works is very small that is the bandwidth of the open loop control system is very small we can say and uh, bandwidth of closed loop system control system is higher okay the we are not measuring any output in open loop control system so that's why there is no any feedback element in open loop control system output measurement is most important task in closed loop system that's why the feedback element or feedback transducer we can say uh, is required okay so output measurement is not necessary that we have discussed earlier the changes in the output due to external disturbances are not corrected automatically so that they are more sensitive to noise and disturbances okay feedback is not there in open loop system so that's why the noise and disturbance may affect output of a system in open loop but as uh, the closed loop system control system is con uh, correcting itself so that's why the disturbance or, or uh, we can say noise cannot affect the output of the control system and in example you can add your own example no problem in open loop system we can say coffee maker automatic toaster hand dryer these are the examples of open loop control system guided missiles temperature control of oven or electric iron we can say these are the examples of a closed loop control systems okay so these are the basics of the system okay uh, i think uh, you got the basics of this chapter we can say or the control systems in that system first we have covered what do you mean by system and then after that we have covered what is input what is output after that we have seen what is this difference between system and control system so system system is just uh, the interconnection of physical components to get a desired out to get a output we can say and to that system we have to apply the input and we are getting the output but in control system control system is nothing but the system which is giving you a proper output out output we can say uh, sorry desired output we can say and after that we have seen the types of a control system that is open loop control system and closed loop system uh, control system in short i can say that the open loop control system is a system without any feedback or we are not in measuring any output uh, uh, in a open loop control system and the closed loop control system is a system whose output is measured or a feedback element is used so if you compare open loop control system and closed loop control system no doubt we are have to use closed loop control system even though it is more complicated and complex because it is providing you a desired output which is mostly required in industry and if you see this subject this subject is very very important as per as your gate exam is concerned you can refer last year papers these are most important subject in a gate exam i can say and uh, if you study this subject properly you can solve most of the questions in gate exam also so that's why this is very important so thank you very much in a next video we will see the next part okay thank you very much bye bye